Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. Today we are going to discuss a few questions based on Russian formalism. The terms used in this theory are very often used for UGC net exams and other competitive exams. And let me give you a brief overview of Russian formalism and here you have a few questions. The first one is, which is the school of literary criticism started in Russia from 1910 to 1930? The answer is Russian formalism. It came up as a reaction against the simplest movement in Russia and the romantic theories of literature. It reduced the importance of a text's historical, biographical and cultural context. Instead, the only concern is the form of a literary work, not the content. And it focused on how language is structured in a literary work. And these features include not only grammar and syntax, but also the literary devices used in a text, such as meter, rhyme, images, etc. Next question, which are the two movements initiated by Russian formalism? The first one is Opujas. It's an acronym for a Russian sentence. It is a society for the study of poetic language in St. Petersburg. The main exponents are Boris Eichenbaum, Viktor Sklavsky, and George Tinchanov. Next one is the Moscow Linguistic Circle. The main Proponents are Peter Progetriev, Raman Jakobson, and Grigory Venker. Next one, who coined the term defamiliarization? So it's an important question. The term was coined in 1917 by Viktor Sklavsky in his essay Art as Technique. And he used the term as a means to distinguish poetic from practical language. And it's an artistic technique of forcing the audience to see the common things in an unfamiliar or strange way. And he used the term Ostrani. And uh, making strange is the technique of verbal art. And we can say, for example, everything in nature has beauty. But see how Keats has made it strange by using the verbal art, a thing of beauty as a joy forever. And another example is George Orwell's Animal Farm, where the animal images, story structure and language expressions are different. They are all presented in a strange way. And Sklavsky uh, used many examples from Tolstoy. The terms fabula and sushe was used by Viktor Sklavsky and Vladimir Prop. The terms are first originated in Russian formalism and employed in narratology. Fabula, which means the story or what is the text about. Fabula is in a chronological order having no shape, no stylistic or formalistic elements. Or we can say it is the raw material. Then we reconstruct or rearrange the fabula to make the story strange and that is sushi. Sushi means the plot or how the text is arranged using deviation, twist, poses, etc. For example, uh, we all know Shakespeare's tragedies are all based on uh, different historical events. But uh, how he presented the story is different from the historical stories. Shakespeare defamiliarized the story by using different verbal technique and made it popular. Who coined the term literalness? The term was first coined by Raman Jacobson and according to him, the object of literary science is not literature but literalness, that which makes a given work a literary work. And the source of uh, literature is neither the author, context, theme or the subject on which a work is produced. On the other hand, the source of literalness is its language. Literalness emerged only from language and literary language is totally different from non-literary works such as languages used by journalists, lawyers or the language used in letter writing. The term for grounding is used by the Czech theorist Jan Mukrovsky. The original term is actualized. It refers to the range of stylistic variations that occur in literature. In phonetic level, alliterations rhyme and in grammatical level, inversion ellipses and in semantic level, metaphor or irony. 
In everyday language, communication is the primary purpose, but in literature, the purpose of our grounding is to disrupt such everyday communication. And according to this theory, by employing unusual forms of language, which breaks up the reader's common routine behavior or common place views are replaced by new and surprising insights. Next one, who is the author of the book Morphology of the Folktale? The author is Vladimir Probe, and he broke down the stories into morphemes, which means smallest narrative units. Prague Linguistic Circle When the formalist school of thought was suppressed in Russia, Jacobson moved to Prague, then he joined with the Prague Linguistic Circle. The prominent figures are William Mathesius, Raman Jacobson, René Velek, and Jan Mokrovsky.